Hi, this is Mark with Safe Day Trading. Are you interested in learning how to effectively trade the market for real-time profits? Do you want to supplement your income today or for your retirement? Discover how simple it is to make three to five hundred dollars a day when you have the Safe Day Trading dot system. I want to make it easy for you. Go to SafeDayPodcast.com. Register for the free ebook, Your Fundamental Truth to Making Consistent Money Day Trading. Also, free Safe Day Trading mini course. Learn the truth about trading safely and profitably. And free eavesdrop trading session. Listen to us, trade live, and make real money daily. Follow the dot and make a lot. Remember, it's all free. See you at safedaypodcast.com. And today with me, I have Gary Dean. Gary, how are you? How are you doing, Mark? I'm great. So, Gary, I'm doing fantastic uh, myself. Good. Well, let's talk a little bit about how you got to develop this company that you have. Can you, you know, give me a little of your history? Yeah, sure. So I was, I was actually a financial advisor back in uh, 2000, around 2003, 2004. And I had, uh, I, I was just writing a newsletter just for free. It was just going out uh, to, it was, it was a lot of people. And they, I just got a very good following on it. And then I had, a, you know, some guy that came up to me and actually made me an offer to try to, you know, do this where we can uh, monetize it. So I did that, and it we I I was able to convert a lot of people that were just the free uh, members that we had into paying subscribers. And uh, my the company I was working for made me uh, make a decision on <laughs> what I wanted to do, either the newsletter or, uh, or or be a financial advisor. And the newsletter I loved. I loved doing it. It was called MarketsPath.com. dot uh, com, and I ran that from two thousand and four to into right around 2014 and uh and from there we were doing it, it was a lot of like actual trades that we were doing and it was we had a fantastic track record i was bringing uh guest people in to write and and it started really expanding and then uh from there what happened was i i read a book, uh, behavioral trading, and it was from uh, Woody Dorsey, and he's been he's been in the business for 45 years, I think, and he's one of the pioneers in uh, investor sentiment and the psychology of trading. And I loved the book so much. And when I was a financial advisor, one of their what one of his uh, salespeople contacted me for where I was at. They wanted our whole company because he only did institutions. And um, I, I was able to follow him for close to six months. And I was amazed at how he was able to predict when the market was going to turn. Like it was sometimes months in advance. And uh, so I decided that I was going to get, I was going to send him an email and see if he would be interested in going to the retail end of things. And when we, uh, you know, we ended up having a phone call and he said, I've always been interested in that. He goes, but you know, I have my institutional letter, which he still run, uh, still has. And, it's some of the, the largest in financial institutions in the world that follow him. And um, so he had asked, said, you know, if you're going to do this, then, you you know, it, you're basically running this part of it. I'll provide you with the uh, the content. And from there, we, dec we, we decided on uh, sentiment timing as the actual uh, – the name of our, our service. And uh, we that's been in existence. Uh, we've been running that since 2014. And we get a lot of hedge funds and, and money managers and stuff. And they're, they're looking for the, you know, basically the sentiment part of things. That's a big part of it. But we um, created this it's a it's called the predictive analytics model and we, it's gotten a lot of traction because it works off of three prongs and it's a you have the time period uh that woody puts out and then from there it's backed up by the sentiment so 
on the timepiece, if we're looking for a low or a high in the market in a, in a particular time period, and let's say the market's heading down and we have a 0% bullish sentiment, so that's kind of supporting the turn because it's a contrarian indicator. And then from there, I do the, the technical analysis. So I'll start looking at – I primarily just work off of – daily and, uh, and hourly charts. So if I see them flashing buy signals, uh, they say divergences uh, on the buy side, what we do, what I do is start looking for where support levels are and, and then let them know this is where, you know, this is where you're going to look to buy put a one, two percent stop. We don't we don't make trade you know, we don't tell them to, you know, do this or do that. We just say these are your you know, this is the the buy levels that we would be looking at. And uh, and it works out fantastic to where we're really catching we we have a lot more retail traders that are uh, that are joining our, our service because they may be doing something with a, another service, say something like uh, what you do, but they're able to get a good idea as far as what direction they're able to do. So they may have a shorter time period, but they know that in the, the bigger picture, by reading our newsletter, they may be you know looking for some type of low or a high in that part of it. But uh, but that's basically how we got you know how this whole thing started. Can you explain a little bit about market sentiment and what that means? Yes. Uh, so market invest it's investor sentiment and really the way that 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 this works, Mark. It, it's a Woody has a uh, a bunch of different people, whether it be financial advisors, uh, money managers that they're 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 managing other people's money. And they they go into his his institutional website and put in for what the majority of their clients are are feeling. So one say financial advisor may have a hundred two hundred uh, 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 say clients, and if they're in there saying you know listen man our clients are they, they want out of this market. It, it goes into this uh, this data that he has, and each week he projects, you know, what the uh, what the investor sentiment is, and, it, and it's at, it's an end of day uh, indicator. But he's one of the one of the few in the world that actually tracks investor sentiment like this. And um, and that's really what kind of started him off was him creating this uh, say algorithm to be able to uh, you know to see how investors are feeling. Now the way it, it's so as I was explaining before, um, you have if everybody it's a contrarian indicator meaning that if you have everybody that is uh, that is looking down and we have a very low sentiment, bullish sentiment reading, meaning there's only 1%, 0% people that are, that are bullish on the, on the stock market. What that implies to us, it's not an automatic uh, buy signal, but it's a tool that you can use. So if, you, if we're seeing a series of 0% sentiment readings, it's not the time to be getting aggressively on the short side because the market has a funny way of making the majority, especially retail traders, uh, it, it end up on the wrong side of the trade. So we use it as a, as a tool. And like I said, we'll combine that with time as well as uh, regular technical support resistance. But, the, uh, but that's really it. So the, in the, the, a good way is it to kind of explain how the – investor sentiment data that we get works. It's, it's very similar to, uh, say, patterns where you have, uh, if you're looking for some type of top in the market, typically the market's going gonna, gonna to be rounded, but you're going to get V bottoms. And, and the sentiment is, is very close to that, meaning that we can get a, a, probably five times as many bullish, uh, extreme bullish sentiment readings where they're 90, 99, 98, where it will take 
three weeks to four weeks for the market to actually top. So we've learned this by, you know, just following doing this for so long that we know, okay, even if you have bearish divergences uh, or sell signals uh, on, a, on the charts that we find and we have 98, 99% bullish sentiment, you, you want to wait for a break. <laughs> In, in the on the downside instead of trying to pick your top because it's like I said it could take weeks for that one to play out but when you get zero percent bullish sentiment readings and if you get a series of them uh, like one or two and the market's heading down it's you can go with pretty good confidence that the market's going to make some type of low and we're going to have a pretty big bounce off of uh, or off of that bullish sentiment reading is I mean bearish sentiment reading and uh, just the regular technical support levels that we look at. Okay. So when you do this, I've got well I've actually two questions. Uh, okay. a little presidential a little presidential question for you there, Gary. Um, how far out do you look and are you primarily looking at equities? Well, what we primarily what we do is we consider ourselves just a a market timing uh, newsletter where we're letting people know what which way to be looking up or down whether it's safe to be looking to short this market or it's safe to be buying it, and we pretty much our primary time period is. It's, I would say our sweet spot is two to four weeks, so they're, so they're kind of mini swing trades, but we also go into longer time periods. So, like, for example, when we were coming towards the end of 2021, um, Woody, my partner, was saying, you know, listen, get you want to be out of this market because 2022 is going to be a bloodbath. And it ended up at toward right after the, the Christmas hit, we started to see the market a little bit on shaky grounds and, you know, you know, the rest of the story. So that particular call, you know, was it's a year out that he's, you know, he was looking for that. But from with it, say the bigger picture, we were say looking down within that, we're going to get these mini moves up and down. So we do both the bigger picture and then, the shorter picture and we primarily just do it off of uh, uh, the S&P 500 but Woody also does it with gold and cryptos but it's really not in our main newsletter that's a kind of a separate one that we'll put out but, but for the most part for what sentiment timing uh, does it, it's the S&P 500 it's on time per periods anywhere from two to four weeks it could be two months you know it all depends on what the his timing indicators are, are talking about but I would say the primary time period is two is is anywhere from two weeks to one month okay so um, can you share a little bit about uh, what you guys are thinking in 2020 from a you know a 50,000 foot level and 2020 or 2022? It's 2022. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I was like, well, that would be easy because I could just look at the chart. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, we, we um, our our overall really perspective on things right now was that 2022 is going to be the roughest, and and we like I said, we've been saying that for for quite some time and it had to do with a lot of just long-term say technical red flags that we were seeing um his in and woody has a has a longer term uh like say sentiment indicator that runs off a 50 and 200 a moving average and they it would they were through the atmosphere so our take right now is in it's with the with interest rates where they are they're it, it, they're not going to we don't see them coming down anytime soon we think there's a, a few reasons for that and that's you know we think we're just say gas prices are and inflation and uh and, and the supply kind of chain issue that we have that even if the fed raise goes up to five percent interest rates it's not going to really hit the inflation part of it 
as easy as they, they think. And that's mainly because we shut down the world economy, <laughs> which has never been done in the history of the world. So the ripple effects are going to be hitting. Now, when we were talking about the 2022 uh, being being a bad year, we, it, that's, we, we were looking for the low to come in when, when it did for the COVID bounce off of that, but it just went to extremes. So the way that we're looking at things right now is it's taken the Fed, or let's just say it, it's uh, from 2009, we, they basically went to zero interest rates. They have built their balance sheet up to somewhere close to $9 trillion. So if it's taken that long to, <laughs> to get the stock market where it is, if they need to unwind their balance sheet and they need to raise interest rates, it's hard to say exactly where the low will be. Now, one thing that, that we've talked about is, uh, is money coming in from overseas. So we don't believe it's going to be like a crash crash like it, we, we saw back in the, the financial crisis, but we do believe that this market will be heading lower. Uh, but at some point, we're going to get foreign money coming in because they're trying to leave the euro. They want out of it. They, they, they've had negative interest rates for five years. So they're, they pretty much know the writing on the wall. So that, is, that will be our backstop. But they may not come in until sometime in 2023. And the low may be close to you know, 2,000 or lower on the S and P. So that's really say our, our from 50,000 square feet. What we're, look, what we're looking at is, you know, it's, it's going to, this market's going to have a very tough time getting buy-in from outsiders because it's, it would the easy money is what brought us here. Now there's no easy money anymore. You're not getting, you know, a lot of companies can't, uh, borrow and buy stock back, which is another reason why the market made it to where it is. So when all that stops, you, it's we're going to see. We we expect to see a very challenging time for uh, for for the stock market throughout 2022. But we do anticipate to get these short covering rallies like we're getting uh, like we're getting now. Okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering. I mean. You're saying that the S and P five S and P five hundred would be down to two thousand. Isn't it around thirty seven hundred right now? Yeah, yeah. So we're not. Like, you know what though? Like real quick, um, we, that's just saying where it could go. We we sure. uh, I meant the bigger like where it's going. We you know it will we'll have a better idea once we start getting closer to the time period where we're going to be anticipating some type of low to come in. So it, it, it could be 2,500. It could be, may end up being 2,800, 2,900, but we're expecting lower. It's just a matter of the, say, the rate of change on the downside because it's been pretty fierce right now. And eventually what will happen is that rate of change on the downside will start to slow down dramatically, even if we're making new lows. And that's when we'll start saying, all right, let's start picking where this low will be for a longer term, uh, say, view on the market. So, you know, when I say 2,000, that's just throwing out a number if the Fed has to unwind their balance sheet. Well, I think they need to, but like you say, you know, 2,000 may be the very bottom, and there's plenty of room in between to really see if there's right. a Exactly, exactly. And like I said, as we get closer towards, you know, the, the time period, because like we, 2022, we, we always knew it was going to be ugly. Um, once we start getting in, I, and we do believe that the, the ugliest part hasn't even come yet, that's going to start like right around the October time period. So this, this is just a pre- precursor of what we believe is going to happen. That's why I throw out that 2000 number because we, th we don't believe that the rate of change on the downside has not started to turn at all. It's a short term it has, but longer term, we're still looking at it going, going straight down. So until we start seeing that diverge a little bit, then this market is still going to continue lower. Well, you've got the elections early November. So, 
God knows what's going to happen. Oh. <laughs> that's that's it. That's true. <laughs> so, Gary, we are running out of time. Um, I wonder if you can let my listeners know how to get a hold of you and find the information that you just talked about. Well, there's two two things. Uh, one, they can just go to uh, www.sentimenttiming. Dot com. That's where you'll just see basic everything that we do. But what we 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 just uh, we started working with a uh, with a group, and they what we want to do is we want to we we want to quiz people on what they know and what kind of trader they are, because we feel like if we have that idea, we'll be able to help them out more. And to take that quiz, it's uh, sentiment timing research group dot com forward slash pre dash quiz and and that will uh, it, it's going to bring you to a little quiz thing and that will get you right that will get anybody right into our distribution list and from there you can you can start they'll start receiving free information from us and uh, and, and good market trading you know uh, information it's not uh, you know just trying to get them to sign up it's a uh, we, we give we give legit information out to our free people as well Okay. Well, Gary, uh, we've run out of time. I really thank you for sitting down and explaining uh, sentiment uh, trading and look forward to talking to you again. Mark, thank you so much. Okay, this is Mark Stowers with Safe Day Trading. Talk to you later. Hey, everybody. I want to mention, too, that we have a YouTube site called Safe Day Trading, which we show you trades that we make with the techniques that we use. You can also send me uh, questions that you might have at mark at safedaytrading.org. Anyway, talk to you later.